Live from the Cactus Creek at Ibri, he is the king of prime time, Ghana's undisputed entertainment laureate, and still the youngest old man in Ghana. Put your hands together, show some love for the indefatigable KSM. The KSM Show. Oh man, I'm, I'm so excited as, as, as usual. I always have excitement, and especially when I'm going to be talking to ah, these entrepreneurs. But for now, let me call them a power couple. Charlie, they are a power couple. And I don't know if you've heard about Spectra Global. They are dynamic. And uh, let me start first by introducing one half of the partnership. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Show some love for Karen Evans. Ha! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. Karen, please sit here. Thank you. Please sit here. And you notice I said a power couple. So if the half is here, then there's another half coming. <laughs> Put your hands together. Show some love for the principal architect and CEO, Williams Evans. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> hey. Thank you. Please have a seat. And I think I made a mistake. Eh? I didn't say you were the COO. Yes. I just mentioned CEO. <laughs> it's, 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 it's sexism, male chauvinism, but forgive me. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> they are here. They are power couple. We could be talking about architecture plus design plus many other things, <laughs> folks. If you're thinking of building, if you're thinking of doing anything architectural, design-wise, stay tuned. When we come back from the commercial, you're going to hear things. <laughs> Stick around, folks. We'll be right back. The KSM Show. Hey, folks. I'm reporting right here live from Cactus Creek. This is where my next show is, man. On Father's Day, I'm doing a special performance called a Japa. This is not a Japa deal. Though. My show is more confusing than a Japa deal. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, trust me, folks, this show is not for lightweights. Uh -uh. It's just for those who have strong shock absorbers for fun. I don't want any parties for fans here. Uh uh. And this your MPP. I don't want any sickle fans. Man, it is happening on the 18th of June, Saturday, and the next day, Sunday, the 19th of June, right here on Cactus Creek. And mind you, by the way, the language adult, PG 18. KSM, Diasembeba. He is dazzling his fans to his latest one man special. A Japa, a Father's Day special. Dates 18th and 19th June. Time 4 p.m. prompt. Very limited seats. Reserve your tickets now. 0549 5 Okay, folks, for the package that is the buffet and the KSM comedy show is 300 per person. And if you want to see only the show, that is 100 Ghana cities. Or if you decide you want only the buffet. It is 250 Ghana cities. Either way, I recommend the package, 300. Get a great buffet and see a great show. Hey, Japa, the man is back. You can freshen up at home. And in your car. So, why insure just your car? Introducing Homeprehensive, a single insurance policy for both your car and home. Get Homeprehensive from Vanguard, because when it comes to insuring your car and home, ba boom preco. Most of you are loving my jacket. Mr. Sao, I am a rough. The jacket is provided by ASEPA Essentials. So if you want some, this is the number to call. 0209-059-215. So call ASEPA and get yourself a pretty decent jacket.
the KSM Show. We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. And as I said before, we're talking about Spectra Global. So if you want anything architecture, anything construction, anything design, you are at the right place. Call a friend to call a friend to call a friend to tell them this show, if you miss, nay, wala or wala. So I introduced them as a power couple, and uh, they are here. To my immediate left is Karen Evans Helm. Karen Evans Helm. Yes. You're the COO yes. of Spectra. Yes. And uh, William. William Evans Helm. Uh, Helm, and you are the CEO. <laughs> wow. Absolutely. <laughs> Good to see you both, and welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. My pleasure. We've been watching this show for a very long time. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we are here. I'm glad. I'm glad. Of late, I'm getting guests who come in and say, oh, what's your idea? They, they just remind me that I am old man. But we're still there. Yeah. 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 Good to see you. Thank Let you. me start with ladies first. Mm -hmm. Spectra Global. Yes. You do architecture, construction, design. Let me start with you. Tell yes. us a little bit about Spectra Global. Spectra Global, like you rightly said, we are a design and construction company. So we have a house full of architects, engineers, quantity surveyors, basically all the professionals you need to bring up um, a proper building structure. Mm. So we offer services in architecture, interior design, construction, and we now have a housing development as well. Mm. 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 And you've been in business for how long? For 12 years. We've 12 been, years? Yeah, since okay. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> William, 12 years. <laughs> Has there been a time where architecture, construction, design was, was booming, or this is the time that really is the time? <laughs> Well, I would say sometimes it's, um, there's been times that it's boomed, okay. and then obviously there are times that it dips. Mm -hmm. But as a business, you have to find a way to survive and make sure that you grow in, within every cycle. So whether it's booming, whether it's dipping, you have to find you're a way to you grow. You are growing. Yes, you have to grow. Whether it's booming or you dipping, you, to, you are growing. You have to find a way to grow. <laughs> so there have been times, yes, things have been great. There have been times that things have dipped. But then mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. key is growth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Growth. I hear you. Growth. Times that you consider things have slowed would be times like what? Well, I would say it would be times that we ourselves as a business were now putting ourselves properly together. We were running perhaps on, on energy without structure and then we hit a, a, a bottom rock and realized that no, we need to change focus, we need to structure ourselves and, and begin to set up as a proper business. Mm -hmm. And that has always been the dream of um, building a, a business you know we are both professionals both of us are architects mm -hmm. and as professionals you can just run as a professional mm. but then the dream had always been that we need to build a proper business with structures allow other people who work with you to find a career path mm. and be able to work with you for long and see that they are satisfied in the environment in which they find mm. themselves mm. so you said architecture yes i did at uh KNUST. KNUST. Yeah, yeah, right here in Ghana. Right here. Yeah. There are good things right here in Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the same? The same. Okay, okay. We'll get to that later. <laughs> but for now, let's stick with the architecture and everything. Okay. So COO of, of this company. Yes. What have been your toughest moments before we get to the <laughs> glory part? Okay. So as um, COO, the toughest thing has been that I've had to do a lot of shifting. Shifting? Be yes, shifting. Because, you know, when you are running a growing business, you don't have everything in place. So a lot of times, you hold where there's, there's trouble that mm. needs attention. So mm. you basically um, hold one aspect that needs attention. You put it together, it's running properly, and then another place now calls your attention. So the challenge for me has been um, having to shift a lot. As the business is growing, you know, you are shifting to make sure that it's going on the path it has to go and it's, it's doing well. So depending on where the, the need is um, with respect to the vision and where we are going, I've had to do a lot of shifting, mm, you know, to mm. make sure that we are on course. Mm, mm, mm. So business in 12 years, yes. how long has it taken to be on course looking back? Where would you think now we can say we're on course? Um, I would say we are now on course, I think, um, probably from 2019. Okay. Okay, so we started putting structure and systems and things right like from 2013 
when we started with um, putting a board together, managers together, systems, how things work. So we have a vision of building a business that if William and Karen are not there, the business still runs. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't mm -hmm. be the case that, okay, so William and Karen are now retiring so or they've traveled, so now the, thing, the whole thing falls down. So we started this journey of putting structure and running it as a proper business right from, I think, three years after we started. Mm -hmm. So we kind of pivoted in terms of this structure um, journey when we joined the Stanford Seed Program and then it was, you know, taken to a new Ooh, high. Level, yeah. Yes. Okay, great. We'll be talking about that soon. But folks, before I even continue, I just want you to take a, a short look at this, you know, uh, collage of some of the things the buildings they have been responsible for. Just take a look at this. We'll be right back after this. Take a look at this. Awesome. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. Because you mentioned you joined uh, uh, Stanford See. Transformational. Yes. Yeah. What was the point that you got to? And this, any of you can take this question. That you realize, let's upscale ourselves. Let's join. Let's study about this thing, and then you join the STN. What? What? At what point was that? I, I think we've always had the the vision that look, we want to grow. We want to. Um, structured a business. So I remember in the very early days, I used to always speak and say architecture. <laughs> I came up with the saying that architecture is as a business as a bank. Because architecture is as a business as a bank. Okay. Because okay. the only organization I could look to or we could look to to see structured properly, let's say, was a bank. So when we said that, that was in our mind. But somewhere in 2017, things didn't too, go too well. Um, financial and everything, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we hit rock bottom, and we realized that look, we needed something drastic um, to turn the business around, to turn our lives around. And that's how come we found the Stanford Seed. Mm. And that has been one of the, um, let me say the jet fuel <laughs> in the engine mm -hmm. to propel us, and like Karen said, it's a pivot movement. So um, from there, the, it's, it's giving us a lot of clarity. We've been able to put a transformation plan together and we've leveraged on the network and it's been growth and we are growing gradually and we are hoping we'll get to our vision. In fact, the vision is very big, but we'll get there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what is the vision? <laughs> well, we think you are there now, but... Uh, oh, no no, 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 no. What is the vision? We are not there at all. I mm. mean, um, the vision is to have an um, AEPC company that is a business that has um, the full spectrum of the built environment professionals in one house so that when um, a customer walks in the, the stress is left at the door so at one place you get everything you need mm. to get your building you know from your idea into reality we are doing that now but it's not at the scale that we want it to be mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. now with the um, after and everything Africa has become the market so how do we scale from Ghana to Africa. So when I say that we are not there, we really, because we are looking at Africa, we are not just looking at Ghana. We have to scale beyond Ghana. Mm, yes. Mm, mm. So that's the idea, yes. scaling beyond Ghana. Yes. Mm. Our actual, our vision is to become the preferred partner for design and build in Africa. The preferred partner for design and build in Africa. So we want to see Africa as a market not Ghana, because look, large businesses need large markets to exactly. play in. Mm -hmm. And we think that we can play in our market here in Ghana, but we also can expand beyond our, our market. We've seen companies that have been dotted across nations, and we don't see why not for us as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome, 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 awesome. Let's say I'm a customer, client, customer, client. Yeah. Customer I've worked client. in as a, yeah. as a client. I yes. need some design. Right. I want you to walk me through the minute the customer comes in, what are the important things that you want to know from them? And how, how, how do you do your work around the customer? So, so you see, the 
every customer works up with an idea. Yeah. You have an idea of what you want. Mm -hmm. And many times you have a lot of ideas. But the first thing is that we try and help you to put the ideas together properly. So when you're working as a customer, we allow you to speak your mind. We allow you to dream. We don't cut short your dream. We go through a process where we try and pull out or get out, sift out the idea. Then we help you to put some kind of budget to your idea. I always say that when you want to buy a car, you do a bit of shopping around. Mm. You want to buy a Mercedes, you try, go to the place, go to the shop, check out the price, and then finally after doing a little shopping around, you determine which one you can afford or which one you think with a little push you can buy that can still satisfy your needs. However, unfortunately, in our part of the world, people don't build that way. People want to start a, a project and just start moving. And we all know that planning is essential to the success of anything. In fact, the Bible says that who starts a building without counting the cost? So we try and help you first, not destroy your, your ideas, but allow you to flow with your ideas. Mm -hmm. And then we help you to build a budget, a rough idea. And then we, we bring all this to you. And then once it sits with you, we take you from there and we do what we call the first sketch design. The first design helps you to see what the building is going to look like, your layout. We take you through. We are very, very customer centric. So we, we discuss the design with you. We show you what it's going to look like inside and outside. We believe that um, the outside of a building is very good. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's pretty, it's beautiful. But more importantly is the inside because people live in the inside of buildings. They live within the space. So we are very interested in the creation of quality space, inspiring space, space that leave a lasting memory. Then after that, where we allow you to make changes. So mm -hmm. because... You are designing for the client. You are not designing for yourself. So you may do something. You may put some ideas together. It may not sit 100% well with the person. You allow, you present it to the person. You allow the person to make some modifications, changes. You do that. And then once the client is happy and comfortable with what you've given him, then we start what we call the production drawings, where our um, engineers come in and all the other things are done. And then we build what we call the cost module, the BOQ, the bills of quantities, mm. the actual detailed costing line by line. Plus or minus, by the time we finish, we are falling within the initial budget range because the idea is to design within your budget so that you don't start with an idea and then when you finish, it's so, it's, the cost mm. is so prohibitive, mm. you don't want to do that. Mm. And then we deliver the project. The concept of what we do is that we want to take the stress off you. There are a lot of people who need trusted people to do work for them, mm -hmm. knowledgeable people to mm -hmm. do work for them mm -hmm. that they can rely on, who do their work well, and after that, hand over their keys to them so they can focus on what they do best, their work. And that's where we come in. We bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. So we take you through all this process. We do the construction, we do the fit out, and sometimes even the furnishing for you. And then we drop your keys in your hands and we help you to even open the project. We do a, <laughs> a buy for you. <laughs> What well, you come across, I'm sure you do, customers who have a, a very, very different take that you know is very, very unrealistic or somehow like building castles. How do you deal with such cases to, to tame them and say, no, what, what you are thinking of? How do you handle people who have ideas that you think they are not realistic? <laughs> do you have any? Yeah, we, we get them. Um, you just ask them questions and make them think. Mm. So somebody comes and they want to build castles in the air. You ask them questions that will make them ask themselves again, do mm. I really need this? Mm. Where my vision is, can I, can I actually do this with another solution? So for people like that, they need a lot more time because you have to bring them down and then resell them a picture that will still help them get there, but something that they can actually achieve because it's very painful to invest in... Um, in a building, get halfway mm. and get, they get locked up. So those are some of the things that we guide our customers away from. So that by the time we are done, we ask you, we, we ask you diagnostic questions about your vision, your mm -hmm. family, why, we, why are you doing this exactly? So once we get to the heart of that, then we give you the solutions that will help you mm -hmm. to achieve that. Mm -hmm. What do you think are the mistakes many people make when they want to go into a building or something? What are the common mistakes that folks listening to you may know if they are avoidable or they are just expected mistakes so it, it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah uh, they don't count the cost some they, don't count the, they cost. don't count the cost 
we see so many buildings that have been left for years. Mm. You, they can't finish it, mm. and they can't. There is at a level also that they can't also live in it or rent mm. it out. So the capital is locked. So if one of the mistakes we see is not counting the cost. Mm -hmm. Another of the mistakes is copying from another region and wanting to plant mm. in Ghana. So mm. maybe you have somebody who's lived in the US or UK or in, in the diaspora, mm -hmm. and they want to uh, transpose the building they see there into so, our yeah. climate, and it doesn't work. Mm. So they come in, they spend a lot of money, me per plan we are, but it doesn't <laughs> work here. <laughs> you know, no, South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm not> <laughs> so, but it doesn't work mm -hmm. here. So th that's mm -hmm. another um, of the mistakes that um, we have also seen that um, people make. And another thing is sometimes they also try to shy away from professional help mm. in the name of saving cost. Mm. But then you realize that you go along the line and you realize that you actually spent more. more. Because really, the building materials cost is the same. But you can have somebody who apply the same building materials and their property will come out way better than yours because of the creativity behind, because of the finesse with the hands that even constructed it. So that at the end of the day, you realize that you all spend the same number of blocks, same number amount of cement and everything, but when it's finished, one building is of more value than the other mm -hmm. because there was professional intervention. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not, I think William wants to add. Uh, let, let me, I just wanted to use an example. You see, if anyone was doing a business plan proposal to For, a bank, okay. they would certainly, without thinking, go to a professional and say, you know, help me to put it together because they know they don't know. But you know, construction in Ghana, everybody's a contractor. Everybody feels he can build something, just like everybody's a coach in football, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so many times you lose out on value. Let me give you an example. So let's say you want to build a property to rent, and you have this nice idea. If you spoke to your architect, a professional, because he, he does this diagnostic to find out why do you need this? Is it for your home? If it's for property rental, the moment you mention property rental, his mind begins to think, this is not for you. He must sit, first check what location is this structure mm. going to be there. Mm. Because there's a certain location, no matter how much you spend on the building, beyond a certain threshold, you will not get a certain rent. Yeah. So you advise the person and say, okay, this is your location. Don't spend beyond that this amount because mm -hmm. even if you spend way above this amount, there's a certain rent threshold that you, you can't get. Go above, yeah. you understand me? The other thing is that if you don't use professionals, I have people who have come to say, Oh, Adam, we iron rust pan, concrete won't pan. <laughs> what makes you think that you've not you over all that. used yeah. material? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No one wants to build a building for it to collapse. So if an unprofessional person is doing it, most likely he would overprovide mm. just to save himself. Mm. You don't do so. By the time you finish, you think you have a very strong building, you've wasted material. Mm. And the cost for construction is 10 times higher than the cost for design. Mm. So mm. if you went to an architect to design for you, perhaps he, you paid a little more, but then he saved you on construction cost. Your actual cost savings in the project is actually way less than if you did not. Great. It's getting more exciting. <laughs> so we're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, we talk more about why there's so many, the friends say, uncompleted. It's like a, an institution. <laughs> if you are giving directions to a house or anywhere, and you don't mention, oh, we're incomplete. We are, uh, <laughs> don't know one. Why are there so many uncompleted? We'll be right back. <laughs> okay, folks, the most anticipated show in Ghana now is a Japa. And I'm telling you, if you have not called, why not? Quickly get on that phone and make sure you have a reservation. Come and let's hang out at Japan. It's the most sensational masterpiece of political comedy you see in your lifetime. And the number is 054-954-4462. Your passport to a Japan. Hey folks, I'm reporting right here live from Cactus Creek. This is where my next show is, man. On Father's Day, I'm doing a special performance called a Japa. This is not a Japa deal, though. My show is more confusing than a Japa deal. <laughs> and uh, trust me, folks, this show is not for lightweights. Uh -uh. It's just for those who have strong shock absorbers for fun. I don't want any participants fans here. Uh uh, and this your MPP. I don't want any sickle fans, man. And it's happening on the 18th of June, Saturday, and the next day, Sunday, the 19th of June, right here on Cactus Creek. And mind you, by the way, the language adult PG 18. <laughs> 
SM Diasem Beba. He is dazzling his fans to his latest one-man special, a Japa, a Father's Day special. Dates 18th and 19th June, time 4 p.m. prompt. Very limited seats. Reserve your tickets now. 0549 Okay, folks, for the package, that is the buffet and the KSM comedy show, is 300 per person. And if you want to see only the show, that is 100 Ghana cities. Or if you decide you want only the buffet, it is 250 Ghana cities. Either way, I recommend the package, 300. Get a great buffet and see a great show. Hey, Japa, the man is back. Okay, folks, finally, Havelin Lubricant. This is the 20W50. It's here. It's amazing. We even have one engine cleaner. If you have a diesel engine, it's absolutely amazing. And thanks to Hallmark, this thing is in Ghana now. And if you service your cars at A to Z servicing, they will always replace your oil with Havelin. Let me tell you how you can get in touch with uh, A to Z. The number for A to Z automobile servicing is 059-944-3300. I have been telling you folks, you can actually originate a flight from Kumasi. Not every day I cry, I cry, no. You can do it from Kumasi. So do you want to travel to Wa from Kumasi? Or from Kumasi to Wa? Passion Air does that. And the way you can get in touch with them is simply call their hotline. And the hotline is 0800-221-221. Folks, isn't it amazing that you can do your home insurance together with your car insurance? As they say in Vanguard, Fabum Preko is still on for the comprehensive. Now listen to our man from Vanguard. My name is Samuel Suman. I'm head of distribution for Vanguard Assurance Company Limited. We've introduced the comprehensive policy that to ensure that families, friends, relatives who have their homes and their vehicles can combine the two and have one single insurance product that will give them the peace of mind to be able to enjoy what they do at home and also in the car as well. So all Ghanaians, we are appealing to you that there is a need to focus on your home and make sure there's adequate financial security protection cover for your home so that when you, in an event where you lose your home, you don't lose hope, but Vanguard will be right behind you, stand by you and make sure that you bounce back to life again. So if you are thinking about insuring both your home and your car, think about the comprehensive. Nafa boom preko. You can enjoy your coffee at home and in your car. So, why insure just your car? Introducing Homeprehensive, a single insurance policy for both your car and home. Get Homeprehensive from Vanguard, because when it comes to insuring your car and home, for boom preco. Most of you are loving my jacket. Mr. Sao, I am a rough. Mr. Sao, I The jacket is provided by Asepa Essentials. So if you want some, this is the number to call, 0209-059-215. So call as a pa and get yourself a pretty decent jacket. The KSM Show. We're back, we're back, we're back. And just before the commercial break, we we're talking about uncompleted buildings in Ghana. <laughs> Accra, there is a whole institution, of, you know, and especially when you are flying abroad and you're going to land, hey, uncomplete is what? <laughs> <laughs> and we're learning that people, many, not all, mm. but many people just they get some fans, giddy giddy, let's put something. Yeah. Exactly. 
And so they rush through and they realize halfway or even quarter way they realize. Yeah. I've had people come to tell me that they are afraid of the budget. They don't want to know the cost because when they get to know the cost, it will scare them. Really? So they rather just yeah. exactly. pay but, as you go? But rather when you have the cost, then you can put a cash flow plan and plan structurally how you can achieve this dream. If you want to do it in phases, for example, mm. you can do it in phases, get a phase running. If it's a commercial project, you can get a phase running to bring you income whilst you, you, you put money aside to do the next phase. But if you put everything in a structured way that you can't even continue, you've locked the funds. Mm. <laughs> You're not getting anything out mm. of it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And you end up spending more, so much more than yeah. you would have done. Yeah. Exactly. Why do you think people resist going to a professional for help. We are talking about construction, how everybody else is a con is it, <laughs> It's amazing. Yeah. People will come and they will start advising you. They don't know the thing about, you know. Why is that? And I want you to hammer it to people. The, the need to get professional consultation. Well, I, I think people have the thinking that professional are ex expensive. Mm -hmm. But just like there's a saying that if you think um, knowledge is expensive try ignorance. ignorance you see you think it's expensive and let me just give you a simple scenario if you went to a professional to build for you listen the cost of cement iron rods all of them is the same perhaps his overheads is the kind of supervision he's going to put on your work mm. now if he does a good work for you i've seen people who have built ah, i don't like it brick i don't like it build again all that is money even the guy who's going to break the building and cut away the debris, yeah. is charging a lot of money. Yeah. So there's this notion that professionals are expensive. But mm. I want to dis demystify this notion. If you take a project, the construction cost is about, let's say, 90 or 95%. Mm -hmm. The design cost is about maximum 5 to 10%. Which one, if you were trying to make savings, which one do you think would make more sense to make savings on? It will make more sense to make savings on the 90%, right? Because if I got a 15% reduction on the 90%, I'll get more savings than a 15% reduction on the 10%. What we are always doing is that we are trying to swap the 10% and we end up making a lot of mistakes mm -hmm. on the 90. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how you want to look at it. And that's why people run away from professionals. But if you go to a professional, you can actually save money in your building. Mm -hmm. it, it's like um, you are not well and instead of going to a medical <laughs> doctor, you decide to go to a Wanzam or the chemical seller next door. Yeah, yeah. You think you are doing something. You may get temporary relief, mm, but, but you realize when it's too late that you have very few weeks to go mm. because you were trying to dodge the fee of the surgeon or the fees of the of the medical doctor. Mm, so it's mm. always better to go straight to those who know what they are doing so that you get it right from the get-go. Mm, mm, mm. How do you know what they're doing? Because... Uh, Excuse me, in Ghana, there's a lot of BSS, you know, uh, <laughs> BSS. <laughs> and they, they can talk the world and, you know, when it comes to delivery, there's nothing. How, how, do, how do you guys get to distinguish yourself? People know that, let's go to Spectra and I'm going to a reliable place. And yeah. like you said, I know when I get to Spectra, I can leave my stress at the door, yeah. exactly. you know. Exactly. How do you get that message out for people to know I think it's about track record. Mm. So mm. before you hire um, a designer or a builder, check with the architect. Check what they've done. Okay. So what okay, we do at good. our place is that when you come in, we actually not show you what we've done on the co not just what we've done on the computer, but we take you to real project sites. Mm. So mm. there are times that you see us in action, actually constructing somebody's property. You get to see buildings that we've already done a okay. hundred over, okay. and you realize that even after X number of years, the building are still in good shape. Mm. So you get we show you all that. So it builds confidence in you, mm -hmm. so that you know that okay. So these people, I'm I'm leaving so much. I'm entrusting so much funds into their hands. They actually know what they are doing. So check the track record. Whatever mm. it is you want Very to build. Very important. The check track the, record. Yes. See what mm -hmm. they have done mm -hmm. before. And if you can get some testimonials from their past um, clients also, mm -hmm. you can talk to some of them as well. Mm -hmm. And it will let you know that you are with the right people. Okay. Okay. Is there any particular design, building, architectural thing that you've done that really pleases you? Any one, two of them, or uh. everything you do is... <laughs> <laughs> well... We like, we like what we do. We've done a lot of good designs on our client like, but maybe just a recent project that we, we, we designed. Um, it's, it's, and it's become, um, for some reason, it's, it's all over the place. Everyone is talking about it. It's a 2,000-seat um, auditorium.
2006 auditorium for a church, ICGC, in Tema Committee 5. Now, th what makes it interesting is, is the, the look of the design. Mm. It's, it's very different from what the church, normal church mm. building looks mm. like. Mm. And once again, this was because of the need of the client. Mm. So we spoke to the pastor of the church and he outlined what he wanted. He wanted to grow the church. You know, and as architects, we are, we are taught to do research. If you want to do an airport, if you want to do a house, if you want to do anything, you do a research. Now, we did research on church growth. Wow. And it will amaze you wow. what grows church. It is not only the pitch in the pulpit. Even car park grows wow. church. If people come to your church, and it, in this modern age, they can't find a good place to park their cars, they won't come again. If they come to your church and they feel very uncomfortable in the environment, you won't get the people to come again. Yes, you will get the numbers that would always start with you. As for them, whether from a chicken coop or wherever they yeah. are with you, they are the starters. Yeah. But it's a certain number. So we needed to think and ask ourselves, how can we let design contribute to growing the church? Mm -hmm. And so we look mm -hmm. around and we said, and in design, there's something called contrast. You know, even in fashion, there's contrast, right? If you wear the same thing everybody's wearing, you'll be missing. Yeah. If you do something in contrast, mm. you will stand out. Mm. So that became, so the shape of the building, the colors and everything stood in contrast to the whole community. Uh -huh. And that become, became a beacon. And mm. you know, in, in church history, church buildings had always been a point of reference. That's why in the olden days, they had this long bell tower so that wherever in the community, you can, you can see the church. Yeah. So we set out, to do, having done that research and designed with a shape and a form, which beyond that has also other functional uses mm. to make the church a beacon in the community. Mm. And that has worked out fantastic. Mm. 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 <laughs> ah, that is fantastic, fantastic. If I may add another project. Please. Yeah, so there was another project that we did right here in Ibri that um, also was, that, that was a, a, a personal residence. And what the client made us aware is that, okay, so I want this building to be off the grid. I don't want to have to worry about water. I don't want to have to worry about ECG mm. and all of those. I want the building to be sustainable. Mm. And so we had to um, make the building such that when there was no power connection, when there's no um, water connection, the building still functions. So we designed a thing in such a way that the en whole um, entrance terrace, the base of it was a water tank. So we harvested rainwater. We gave the, we gave the client solar um, captures to give him collect uh, direct sunlight into the basement and we the kind of fenestration we use the kind of materials we use and he didn't want to be painting his house every two years so mm -hmm. we had to specify a specific material so that uh, the building has been there for 10 years he hasn't painted once wow. so wow. when we understand what the client wants mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. we are able to give the person a solution that actually fits and all the stone that we use um, for the projects was hewn from the site. Oh, wow. All the hard landscaping. Wow. So the building is actually green and sustainable. So that's another one. Fantastic, fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. So you know where to go. If you need help, you can leave your stress behind and just go into spec. Oh, that's it. Spectra, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> right. <laughs> Great. Now let's get personal a bit. Uh -huh. ah, the power couple. <laughs> How did you, you, you were both at Tech at the same time, I'm, I'm trying to guess. Yes, we were both at the, at, same the, time. at the same time. Who spotted who first? Ah, uh, it's me now. Eh, <laughs> 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 yeah. were you in the same class or you were, she was senior or you were the senior or you were in the same class? We were in the same class. You were in the same class. <laughs> <laughs> so what particular point <laughs> did you spot and say, ah? So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I think I, I liked Karen because I realized that she was different from a lot of the girls. Mm. Um, I mean, when I, was in, when I was on campus, I was very busy. I've been in music my entire life. Oh, really? And so whilst I was on campus, I was a music director for my church choir in, in, on campus. I see. And so I didn't want a girlfriend that would come and pack her work for me to do. Mm. I didn't have time to do that. Mm. And she was the kind of girl who would, I mean, be at it with the guys. I mean. We, 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 we are presenting our work and Karen's work is there and I don't have to come and do the work for her. So one, it interested me. Two, I think she was a fantastic girl. I mean, she was, by my standards, she's the most beautiful girl in the whole world. Shut some love, man! So is this first year that you... you no, no. First, <laughs> After, after first year, after a while. Oh, after a while. <laughs> Once you have calmed down to, <laughs> to see things properly. When you enter architecture school, the first year, you can't see anything. Just <laughs> <laughs> you have to <laughs> <laughs> You need to 
you disturb yourself. But I think I'd, we also clicked a lot. We, mm. we, we had similar interests. We mm. had a lot of things in common. We used to go and draw. You know, in architecture school, you go for lectures, normal lectures. We used to do 7 to like 5 p.m., mm. right? And after that, in the evenings, you go and draw. Sometimes we draw to the next day, to like 4, 5 a.m., and go back. And so she, she was like, we go and draw together. We go and bring tea in the, in the room. And then after that, we go and draw. I mean, every, one thing led to the other, you know. Oh, this drawing, drawing, drawing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Carol, for you, what, what, what was the magic? Um, William has always been a smart guy. Okay. He's always been very smart. And I mean, I remember in, 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 in school, because that's where we met, when nobody understands what on earth the lecturer is talking about. William does. He will get it. Mm. I mean, and he will explain it to everybody and we will all get it. Mm. So that was um, one of the things that I liked about him. And he was a, he was a gentleman. And you know he's a fine, I mean, you can see he's a fine boy. He's a fine boy. I'll take him, I'll take him, I'll take him. Yeah. yeah, so those, those were the qualities that um, attracted me to him is his smartness, his um, gentleness, mm, and, mm. you know, he wasn't a ruffian. He was serious-minded. Mm, one mm. of the things that I knew even before meeting him as a boyfriend was I knew what to look for. So in our conversations, I'll be asking, I wanted to know where he was going. Because as a, as a woman, you follow where the guy goes. So if he's not going anywhere, and I follow him, so I'm not going anywhere. So mm -hmm. I had to make sure mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I knew where mm -hmm. he was going. So in, mm -hmm. our, in our conversations, I'll be asking him, like, where do you see yourself? You know, like, you're, you're born come on, but serious interview. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, he will share his vision. I want to do this. I want to build this. I'm like, okay, this guy is not bad, you okay, know. Okay. And then that is where I, I, I got hooked. That okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, at what point were you? Did he make it official? I know a friend. You know, they were going out for a long time. Nobody has said anything. So he asked the boy, "Ah, now how come you are now?" Anyway, you know, I mean, you, you was there an official yeah. presentation? Yeah. Like yeah. yeah, yeah, he had to say it because. Yeah. As we, as we progress in the years, I mean, you're not the only guy around, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. Others were coming around, and if you are not talking, then it means that I have to open the door for other people. Yes, so yes. at the point, he had to speak. So he had to, oh, yeah. so you spoke. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't remember. You know? but, <laughs> but I had to speak. Um, I think Karen was very beautiful. There were a lot of guys um, lurking around. Yes, so yes. I realized that, no, if I don't, if I, if I have to wait for a long time, if I'm not careful, I'll lose it. <laughs> so, I mean, I think I had to corner her somewhere and tell her, look, look this is a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Did she respond right away? I think. Or she gave you a few days? I, no, she, I think Karen, we had, we had developed our friendship so well okay, that okay. she agreed. But then I don't quite remember. I don't think Karen told me I went and think about it. But Karen made me understand something like, if we're going to do this, then we have to do it right. Okay. You know, okay. If we have to do it right. We have mm -hmm. to, I mean, those days, look, let me share a funny story with you. We'll be on campus. I'll never forget it. And I, I always advise young ladies, don't throw yourself at a guy. Mm. It's important to, ke to keep yourself mm -hmm. as a young lady. Mm -hmm. It will be raining. I have my umbrella. And, ah, uh, okay, we are going to the studio, and I'm sharing my umbrella with him. And, you know, you are walking shoulder to shoulder, so yeah. you'll be hitting each other uncomfortably. Then you, so I put my hand around it. She will pick your hand like that. <laughs> Really? <laughs> You've not earned the right. You haven't earned it yet. You've not earned the right yet. <laughs> Your umbrella so what? You know, you know, right. there, were, there were little things that I looked out for. One day we went to draw in the studio. We all, I mean, all of us are students. We all drew, we were tired. And then we, during the night we eat, yam, blah, blah, blah. And the studio was messed up. And that same studio is a place where a lecture will happen the next day. Mm -hmm. Everybody just got up and left. And by the time I opened my eyes, Karen had taken a broom and was cleaning the place. Wow, wow. Okay. It, it touched me in a very special way. Mm -hmm. I knew that this is a woman I could, I could create a family with, because I, I like family. Mm -hmm. And I realized that this is a woman who will care about her home. Mm -hmm. And so the mm -hmm. little, little things that, as a guy, you must also look out for is not only the beauty, mm -hmm. you must look out for character. I used to be shy to hold, have coins in my pocket. So anytime I have coins, I feel a little funny. She collected all my coins over time, and the day I was broke, she changed it into notes and gave it back to me. Wow. 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 
Fantastic. So, I, so you have a family now, I guess? Yes, we do. Yeah? Yes, yes. We do. Tell us a bit, how many? There are two boys and a girl. Two boys and a girl? Yes. <laughs> More coming or? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I mean, I, I fantasize with the idea, but sometimes when I remember the days of changing diapers yeah. and waking up to breastfeed, I'm like, nah, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great, great, great. But I did some little research, oh. <laughs> and I don't know, you know, sometimes you get apophenia and sometimes. <laughs> but the only information I got was that you two, it didn't start at Echo. They say you both were at rich age together. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> All right? <laughs> <laughs> so, William, did it start there or you wait till you got to Tech? No, we wait till we got to Tech. In, in school, we're both in this, I mean, school rich age together, but. I saw her some, some very quiet girl okay. who was with the quiet girls because I was very noisy in school. Okay. Um, too noisy. Too noisy. Yeah. Too noisy. I mean, we'll be in the class, the whole class will be quiet. All this guy has to do is just walk in. And suddenly everybody has something to say. <laughs> the quietness is just broken because just because of his presence. That's well. how, I was just like, ah, but this guy pa. Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> so folks that are listening, you know, uh, you, Spectra, no, spe Spectra, <laughs> right? yeah, give me, yeah. Spectra Global, <laughs> you've seen them. They run Spectra Global, and if you see the love that they're sharing and everything, you know that if you pick them for any kind of work, trust me, you haven't gone wrong. Yeah. Trust me, you haven't gone wrong. <laughs> it's, it's been great hanging out with you guys, man. Thank you. And, uh, but by the way, I also want to build a 2000 theater at uh, Cactus Creek Fantastic. one of these days. Fantastic. Fantastic. Nice. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. So I know where to go. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you, have, you have the landscape to, to work in your favor. Exactly. Yeah. You have exactly. Okay. But okay. I wanted to add one thing. Yeah. Um, when we, our business took off, we had joined Stanford Seed and the training. And what I like about that was that it wasn't only to us, but it cascaded down into the organization. Mm. Our team was involved, mm. and it helped us to bring the team along. Because from day one, we've always had this idea that, look, we want a place that people can have careers within the, people build careers. Someone said, I'm a banker. He's been a banker for years. He's built a career. He's fulfilled, mm. and we wanted that. And I think um, Stanford has given us that, Stanford Seed has given us that opportunity, and we are still growing. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me at all because I, I've spoken to people, entrepreneurs from Stanford, you know, and I, I just know that they've gone through the mail. Yeah. And they are not just in business to be in business, that they are in business with an understanding of what yeah. we are looking for exactly. and how to accomplish what we are looking for. Exactly. It's amazing. Exactly. It's amazing. Exactly. So, um, your little, how old are the, the kids? The first one is um, 13, 13, then 10, then 8. Okay, 13, the 10, eight and 8. Is the is a young one. She's the, um, the girl. Okay. She, she checks everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to ask her the question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't have remembered, you know. Good everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's great. That's great. So, Stafford Seed, apart from making you great entrepreneurs, also. Has helped in putting families together. <laughs> yeah, 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 it does. And well, you know, the thing with um, running a business with your spouse is, mm -hmm. if you don't have structure, you destroy your marriage in the process. Mm. Because you kind of carry work home. So if you don't have proper systems and structures in place, you you end up carrying the stress from the office to the to home. home. So you be you end up building a good business your marriage will break down mm. so you have to make sure that you have the right systems in place for the marriage to thrive and actually you actually enjoy it as well as your business your business also growing mm. because if you are not careful you will sacrifice one for the other mm. 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 yeah quick question and we are running out of time but has there been any business decisions that have ruffled both of you you know something with the business that has interfered with the the family <laughs> <laughs> well i think that the, the art of decision making okay. always is, is when, when you are with your spouse and you are in business, it's not, the, it's not just 
I am the boss. Okay. This is what I see. Okay. I think that a good leader needs to explain and bring everyone along. And sometimes, it, it, as human beings, everybody has a different idea. Maybe the same goal, but how to achieve it. So there have been times that maybe making a decision or deciding where we are going, and she has an idea, I have this idea. But we've learned to work it out. We've learned mm -hmm. to sit mm -hmm. down and mm -hmm. say, look, okay. let's look at it this way. We've learned to say sometimes, let what you are thinking, let's give it a shot. You know, we've learned to not, I've learned not to be a macho guy. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. And she's also learned to not say, no, 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 it's always this. Mm -hmm. And I think the collaboration yeah. is what is important. I like that Collaboration yeah. is very important. Fantastic. I mean, Show some love, man. <laughs> so those of who are couple who are thinking about maybe getting together to a business, this is some free, free, free good counseling for you <laughs> even before you get in there. <laughs> what can I say, guys? It's been fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so I much. I've enjoyed, <laughs> you know, having STN on board, you know, and uh, we always learn when STN is present in the mm. studio. Mm. Mm. So in the meantime, in between time, folks, my yeah, 20 years. <laughs> Maybe I can get you guys to send up for me. <laughs> uh -huh. So I'll start and you'll finish. <laughs> so in the meantime, in between time, what do I say? We, we are, are out of here. here. <laughs>